Hi. Waiting for connection. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. Thank you all again for joining us here. Uh, this is Bible Way Church, the family church that cares about you, 453 South Wheatland Avenue, Columbus, Ohio. And uh, we praise God for you all joining us here uh, with us. I know there's many other places you could have been, but I'm so glad that you are joining us here. Let's just start with a word of prayer. God, we thank you. We honor you, O oh God, today, Lord God, for your word. Your word, O oh God, is a lamp unto our feet. Your word is a light into our pathway. Your word, your word, oh God, is a roadmap for our lives, and we thank you, and we praise you, oh God, for all that you have for us this morning. Oh God, feed us with your word. Feed us, oh God. Uh, purify us with your word, oh God. Strengthen us with your word. We thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all again for joining us here. Uh, this, year, this year, we're actually celebrating our 60th year uh, anniversary, and it's, it's, it's a year unlike any other, uh, but we are celebrating our 60th year uh, right here at the corner of Sullivan and Wheatland Avenue here, and I praise God for you all uh, and your continued support all the way down through the years, and 60 years is not anything to sneeze at. 60, you know, a lot of churches don't last 60 days. Some don't last 60 months, but I praise God that God has given all of us longevity uh, to continue this ministry. That's 60 years. Six, that, that is not something uh, to, to sneeze at. 60 years of preaching the gospel. 60 years of lifting up the name of the Lord. 60 years of, uh, of walking by faith and not by sight. 60 years of seeing God perform signs, wonders, and miracles. And, and the greatest of those miracles is, the, is, is, is people receiving salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we praise God for that. But and so th this ministry has been a soul saving station all these years. And so we praise God uh, for uh, the, the Lord and what the Lord has done uh, because of this, this ministry. Many people all around the world uh, have, have received salvation and have experienced that miracle of salvation uh, in their lives. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things shall become new. And I praise God for all, for people, so many people receiving uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, down through the years. Let's look in the Word of God this morning. We're going to look in Proverbs chapter number six, Proverbs chapter number six, verses 16 through 19. Proverbs chapter number six. All right. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven. Are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, uh, and hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Wow, uh, not a scripture to make you want to run. Right, but it when let this just, just stick with me for a little bit. Let's, uh, let, let's dig into this word here. Uh, you might just take off running, I don't know, <laughs> but let's just take let's just, let's just look into the word of God. Proverbs chapter number six. Uh, the scriptures that we read here, uh, today it talks about uh, uh the, our, our roadmap, the things that we need to, 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 to shy away from, the things that God hates, is what it's talking about. And in these scriptures, it's talking about seven things that God hates. It says. Uh, these, 16, these six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. It talks about a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and so of discords among brethren. So out of seven of these things that the, the Bible talks about and says that the Lord hates, two of them involve the same thing. Or, or, or some, it involves uh, the same thing. It involves lying. Uh, what a great time to talk about this <laughs> during this this election year, this presidential election year. What a, what a great both time both sides uh, sit and accuse one another, point fingers at one another, and 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 get their their adjutants and all these things that, uh, to to get together and uh, and they sling mud at each other, uh, what they call it and. Uh, accusing each other of lying, but the issues of lying uh, go much deeper and are more pervasive than just can't two candidates trying to win your vote. The truth is that lying is ingrained in our society. It goes far back. It goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. 
when God asked Adam, where are you? Genesis 3, 10 through 13, he said, and I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thou that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee not, that thou shouldn't not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gave to me, she gave me the tree and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. The honest truth is that we all struggle with lies and deception. We all are struggling with uh, with, with to, to tell the truth. And so uh, my topic this morning is to tell the truth. I want you to, I, you, you ever, anybody ever seen that show? Uh, to tell the truth. And they get three contestants up there and they get a panel of judges and uh, they, they sit up there and they tell falsehoods and they, 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 they say, I am this person and I've done this and that thing and uh, I've done these things and, uh, and, and, I, and, and, and they try to convince the judges that, uh, that they are the person uh, who, uh, who was not lying, who was telling uh, the truth. And so, uh, and so my, my topic this morning is to tell the truth, uh, tell the truth. Uh, the, the, now, now, what is a lie? A lie, according to Merriam-Webster, uh, is to make an untrue statement with intent to deceive. Researchers have found that the reasons why people lie are very complicated. Uh, we lie to get what we want. We lie to get our way. We lie to each other to uh, avoid punishment. We lie to avoid embarrassment. We lie to each other to protect each other's feelings. Uh, we, we lie uh, to others and, and we, we, we even lie to ourselves and, and sometimes we even lie to God. And so it's easy to see why the Bible says in Psalms 51 and 5, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Ah, because we, we do it so easy. Uh, some researchers have said uh, that as early as six months, Babies are able to deceive uh, their, uh, their, their parents or, or their caregivers or whatnot. Uh, the, uh, now, now, so, but but I, I've got some good news for you this morning. Uh, the, the opposite of, the lie, of a lie is the truth. Uh, and it is the antidote to the problem of deception. Uh, we started this series last week. We started exploring the seven deadly sins. The seven deadly sins are pride, envy, lust, anger, greed, gluttony, and sloth. And sloth. But, but I, 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 now I, I can't tell you those uh, seven deadly sins uh, with, without giving you the antidote, the seven virtues, hu humility and kindness and temperance and chastity and patience and charity and diligence. The sins are, 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 are paired with the virtues. And I can't point out the problem without giving you the solution. The, the thing Things that we call the seven deadly sins are not found collectively together in the Bible in one particular verse. They're not. They, they, we, what we call the seven deadly sins are actually, they were actually gathered by uh, the Roman Catholic Church in the sixth century. Uh, they were put together by Pope Gregory. But the, the themes that we found here are found all throughout the Bible. Uh, and so they put them together and they call them the seven deadly sins. But one of them were, was missing uh, from the list that the Roman Catholic Church had put together. And that is lying. And so uh, we're going to deal with that one because we find it right here uh, in Proverbs chapter uh, number six. It is it's one of those things. Things that, that it says that, 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 that God uh, does not like. It is one of those things that we, many of us see as so small, but is really uh, so big. The, uh, the word of God lets us know that he calls it an abomination is what he calls it. The, the, the Hebrew, the word for abomination is the word to'ava. Uh, it means a disgusting thing. It is something that is abhorrent or hated. Uh, and so God hates it. He finds it disgusting. He finds lying uh, disgusting. It is hated because it is something that God can't and won't do. It is something that God can't and won't do. God cannot lie. Numbers chapter number 23, verse number 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall, it not, and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken, and shall, it not, and shall he not make it good? God can't lie because it's against his nature to do so. God cannot lie. God by nature 
It's holy. First Peter 1 and 16 says, uh, be ye holy for I am holy. Isaiah 6 and 3 says, holy, holy, holy. The whole earth, the, the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. God cannot lie because it is not in his nature to lie. He doesn't need to lie. Uh, when we are, when, when you are all, all powerful, when you are all knowing, when you are everywhere present at the same time, what's the point uh, in, in lying? Because uh, you are the standard in which we are to live by. You are the standard in which everything else is framed. God also can't lie because it is against his word. His word is trustworthy and reliable. His word is something you can always rely upon. It is something you can always count on. Uh, uh, well, I, I know that you've heard somebody say one time or two uh, that somebody's word is their bond. Anybody heard somebody say that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that person, their word is their bond. You can, uh, if, if they say it, you can take it uh, to the bank. If, they, if that person says it, I know that it has to be uh, true. Uh, their word is their bond. And so uh, that is how it is with God. His word is true. His word is something you can count on like clockwork. Psalms 119 and 160 says the sum of your word is truth and every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Psalms 12 and 6 says the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth purified seven times. That means his word is purer than silver that's been tried seven times that's been tried in the fire. It is refined and precious. That's what his word is. His word Word is genuine and true. Uh, his word, every every one of his promises, uh, it, 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 you can take it to the bank. Uh, you can take it to the bank because it's guaranteed. It's going to come to pass. The word of God says that his word will not return void, but it will go and accomplish that in which he has already spoken it to do. When God said, let there be, guess what? There was. It came to pass. And so every one of God's promises, uh, you can take it to the bank. Titus 1 and 2 says this. It says, in hope of eternal life, which God who never lies promised before the ages began. That means that his promises are as true and as valid as the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And our guarantee of eternal life. If God would lie, uh, he, would he would be just like any anybody else, if God would lie. Uh, but, but I tell you this morning, there is nobody like Jesus. Jesus. There is nobody that can do you like the Lord. There is nobody like the Lord. You, you hear that song, I've searched all over, but I couldn't find nobody. I, I looked high and low, but I still couldn't find nobody. But, but there is nobody greater. Nobody is greater than our God. There is nobody greater uh, than you, Lord. And so another reason why God cannot lie is because it's something that he hates. The Bible lets us know that something that he hates. Why would he do something that he hates? Proverbs 6 and 16 says, these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination uh, unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue. And then it goes on and it says, a false witness that speaketh lies. God hates lies. One study found that 91% of Americans lie on a daily basis. One study found that, that 91%, that's almost all of us. <laughs> uh, the other ones can't talk, I don't know, but, <laughs> no, but 91% of Americans, it says, lie on a daily basis. Another study said that the average person lies about 1.65 times per day. Another study said this, said that we either we, that we either lie or deceive others or exaggerate or stretch the truth or up to 20 times a day. I don't know where it falls between 1.65. I don't know where you get 1.65. Any, but, but between 1.65 and 20 times a day that we lie or stretch the truth or, or, or fail to, to, to acknowledge and identify the truth. Fail to call out a lie. Uh, that, 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 have you ever told a lie? Uh, the, the answer to all of us should be yes. When's the last time you lied? 
Uh, how often do you lie? Mark Twain was once quoted as saying this. He said, a man is never more truthful than when he acknowledges himself as a liar. Uh, <laughs> if, if you say that I, that, that, I, uh, that I never lie, I never give falsehood, I never uh, shade things in a certain way to uh, make myself look a little better, I never uh, do things to, uh, to make myself look a little uh, better than what I really am, uh, then you might be lying even uh, right now. First John 1 and 9 and 10 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if we say we, we have not sin, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Truth of the matter is, is that you might lie a little bit more than what you think you do. Uh, when you look back and you think over uh, the things you say or the things you do, one way that people lie is by gossiping and backbiting. It's fake. It's false. Some people lie by being, by being fake and phony uh, to others. You uh, you, you're front and acting like you're something that you're not. You're acting like you're a friend when you're really a foe. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're acting like you're for somebody else, but really uh, you, you want to have nothing uh, to, to do with them. God hates lying because lying lies are so destructive. Proverbs 25 and 18 in the New Living Translation says this. It says, telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an ax wounding them with a sword, and shooting them with a sharp arrow. Lies destroy marriages. They destroy families. They ruin careers. Ah, they, they lead uh, businesses down the tube. They fill up the jails and fill up the prisons. Uh, when you lie in court, they call it and they catch you lying. They call you and they, they say they, they, they convict you with contempt of court. They put you in contempt of court. But when we lie on our daily basis, we feel that because nothing happened, I'm good. But in reality, we're all in contempt of God. Ah, when we lie and we, and we, we fail to acknowledge our, our, our present state in the eyes of God, we're in contempt of God. Sometimes we lie by playing little games with our words. We, uh, we, we take out the information that might be hurtful because we think it might hurt somebody else's feelings. We, uh, sometimes we take out part, uh, the, the part that makes us look bad. Uh, we, we like to present the story uh, as, 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 the, as, as looking at us as the hero. We, we like to write it in a way uh, that make ourselves appear uh, a, a certain way. But uh, and, and, and so, so sometimes we can even lie without even saying a word. Did you know you can lie without even saying a word? Yeah, you can, and then, and then so we can lie without even even saying a word by refusing to acknowledge uh, what is is transpiring. By uh, we can we can lie without even saying a word. By not, uh, by not by not saying that that's not true. If somebody says this is this is what's going on and this is what you have done or this is what, uh, what they did or whatnot, and you fail to acknowledge the truth as you know it, it says. You, 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 you can be uh, lying without even saying a word. Uh, they, they, they're lying. Lying can even annihilate our character and lay waste to our witness as the people of God. It can destroy your witness as a Christian. And when you lie, it makes all of us, all of us look bad. Every Christian. It gives us all a bad name. It gives God a bad name. Uh, when we lie, it, 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 it destroys our witness of, of, of a standard of truth, of, of living uh, by righteousness. It, it, it destroys uh, our witness as the people of God who stand on the promises of God. In the Bible, there's a story of a prophet that was sent by God in 1 Kings chapter number 13. He was sent from Judah to Bethel. He was sent to proclaim uh, the, the destruction upon Bethel, uh, and he did just that. Uh, but the Lord told him on your way back, 1 Kings 13 and 9, he said, don't eat no bread. He said, don't drink no water. Uh, don't go back the same way you came. Go back another way uh, in which you came. But an old prophet came and found him and asked him to come and eat with me. He said, come and eat with me. And he, and he, and, and he said to, the, to, to this prophet, an angel told me. He lied. He said, an angel told me. Uh, to come and get you, so you can come and eat with me. He lied. 
And in the midst of the meal, the Lord uh, found them in the midst of, of having their meal. And he voiced his displeasure to them. And the penalty of lying to that old prophet was death. And it was used as a memorial for those that were in uh, the village that was surrounding. Just because uh, they, they, they come to you and use some scriptures does not mean it's truth. Just because they are saying, uh, thus saith the Lord. Just because they're standing with their clergy collar on. Uh-oh does not mean that it's truth. You've got to make sure it lines up with the word of God. You've got to make sure that, that, God, that, that this is what God is saying. Don't just take their word for it. Pray about it. If it doesn't line up for the word of God, you, take it, you, you want to hear from all these prophets and, and all these persons and, and, and people that claim, I got a word for you. But that word is not the word of God. If that word does not line up with the word of God, then you'll find yourself in error. Uh, in the book of Joshua, chapter number seven, uh, the Lord gave Joshua and the children of Israel a victory over Jericho. But God told them not to take any of the spoils of war. God, God told them to destroy everything. The army was elated and everybody was riding on a high and everybody listened to God and God's command. And, and they, were, they, they, were, they were enjoying the triumph uh, that the Lord had led them to all except Achan. He took a little something for himself. When the children of Israel came up against the, uh, the small uh, uh, nation of Ai, they were defeated uh, soundly by an inferior foe. People with less, uh, with the, 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 a group with less people, less armed, less prepared. Uh, they, were, they were defeated by an inferior foe and 36 people died because it turned out that, uh, that, that it was because somebody in the camp had been disobedient. That someone was Achan. When Joshua found out about it, uh, what, what had happened, he, he went to confront uh, Achan and he said, tell me what thou have done. And Achan admitted his lie. He admitted his deception. Achan admitted what he had done. But by that time, the damage was already done. What I'm saying is this. I'm saying that even though you might admit what you have done, when we lie, the damage is already there. It's like going, I heard an old preacher say, it's like driving a nail into a board, driving several nails into a board. He said he told a story about a, a, a father who was teaching his young son about lying, and he, he drove several nails into a board. And he told his son that every lie, every lie that you told represents one of these nails. He said, go and pull out these nails. And he, and he said, go and, and rectify uh, the situation with, uh, with all those that you have lied to. The boy went and did so. And then he said, go and pull out these nails. And, and the boy pulled out the nails, but the holes were still there. And so what he was saying, is, he said, listen, yeah, yeah, you can go and apologize. You can go and fix it, but the damage is still there. The damage is still there. Uh, all we can do is, uh, all we can do, we, we, we can go back and, and, and rectify it, but sometimes the damage is still there. And so God has to do the healing after we have committed the, 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 the damage. And in, in matter of fact, the damage, uh, sometimes when we lie, it involves more people than just yourself. It goes to, uh, to even more people, uh, and more people might be affected because other, so there's somebody that's watching you. And when they see you, when they see you fall, when they see you falter, when they see you, uh, when, when, when they see you wallowing in uh, your, your, your lies, then that also discourages them because they believe that there is no hope. But I understand that the Bible lets us know that there is an antidote called truth. God hates lies because the damage that it caused, but God loves truth because that is who he is. God is truth. Others are affected. When you lie, it makes God look bad. It makes the gospel, it makes the, the, the gospel not look like it's the truth. But the truth uh, it, it, it is not found in the flowery words of, of men. Truth uh, it is not found in, in, in preachers and, uh, in the, uh, the, that, that act like used car salesmen or saints of God that act like the used car salesmen. It's not found in the mouths of prophets. 
uh, that tell you what you want to hear so that you open up your wallet. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way. He's letting us know what truth is. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 8, uh, 31 and 32 says, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. When you will know the truth, and the truth shall do what? The truth shall set you free. The truth will set you free. God cannot lie. He hates lies. Leviticus 19 and 11 says this, Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And he doesn't want his children to lie either. He doesn't want us to lie. The word tells us that truth, his truth, not your version of the truth, his truth will set us free. That's what the word of God lets us know. Lies want to keep us in bondage and held hostage to falsehoods and things that, uh, that are not true or partially true. Somebody said that the greatest lie is the one that has a little bit of truth sprinkled in it. Well, technically, well, uh, if we look in the gray area, no, 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 God is not in a, in a gray area. God is true. Ah, when, when, when we speak truth, it opens up real lines of communication. When we open up real truth, there is healing there in real truth. When we open up uh, real truth, when we speak truth, when we live truth, uh, when, we, when, we, when, we, when, we, when we constantly uh, are, are speaking truth, it opens up real lines of communication. If you got a friend that will speak truth to you, no matter what, guess what? You got a good friend. Uh, you got a good friend, a, a, a friend is one that will speak truth to you even if it's hurtful. A, a friend is one that will speak truth to you even if it's something that you don't want to hear. A true, a fr a true friend is one that will speak truth to you even if they know it might agitate you, even if they know that it, uh, that, that it might knock you down a peg. Because, but, but you got to understand that, that when you speak truth, uh, God does the rest of the work. You just are, are, are obligated to speak truth. Uh, uh, speak the truth, not just to those that are in your circle. Speak truth to power just as well. Uh, speak the truth to, to those that are in positions of authority. Uh, speak truth to the city and the state and the, uh, the, 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 the government leaders. Uh, speak truth. Uh, speak what the Word says. The Bible says uh, in 2 Timothy 4 and 2, preach the Word, be instant in season and out of season. Repu reprove, rebuke, exhort them with, with all law suffering and doctrine. Don't back down because of what popular opinion is. Don't back down because the conversation is difficult. We all have God on our side. If you speak truth, God will back you up. If you speak truth, God will back you up. If you speak truth, God will back you up. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. We don't operate based upon the lies and the deception of the world. Uh, we we don't lie, operate by lies. That's, the, that's taking on the character of Satan. John chapter number 8, verse number 44 says, When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own, and he is a liar and the father of it. The devil is the father of lies. I, I heard somebody say once, when we lie, we are more like the devil than any other time when we lie. Uh, the, the devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. But I'm so glad that Jesus came along. He has come. Uh, to, to, to set the captives free. Uh, he came to open up the eyes of the blind. Uh, he came to give liberty to them that are afflicted and them that are bruised uh, and them that are, that are, that are suffering uh, from the affairs of this world. Uh, Jesus is truth. Uh, when, he, when we follow after him, we can't do anything but speak truth. John 18 and 37 says, Then Pilate said unto him, So you are a king. And Jesus answered and said, he said, you say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I will have come into the world to bear witness of the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Can you hear the truth of the gospel this morning? John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. What is truth? That's what Pilate ended up asking. What is truth? What is truth? For centuries, philosophers and religious scholars 
have tried to nail it down and try to put it in the box and try to put some words together to identify what truth is. Wise men and women still debated. They still debated in the, 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 the uh, halls of, of various colleges and universities and symposiums. Heard one definition of truth as this, truth is that which is consistent with the mind, will, character, glory, and being of God. Uh, the truth carries a, a heavier weight than a lie. A lie is paper thin and you can see right through it. Sometimes it's flimsy and it doesn't hold any weight, but truth is something that you can stand on. Truth is something that will not budge by the winds and the waves of this life. Another person said truth is the self-expression of God. Truth is, the, the, the truth of the matter is this, it boils down to this, Jesus is the Son of God. That's what truth is. The truth is, is that he wants to set you free from the powers of sin. John 3, 16 and 17 says, for God so loved the world. Nobody has ever been able to measure how much so loved is. For God so loved the world that he he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If you're looking for truth, you better find Jesus. If you're looking for truth, you have it in Jesus. Psalms 105 says, For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever, and his truth endures through all generations. That means his truth. Just as, it was a, just as it was true on the day in which they nailed his hands and feet to that old rugged cross, uh, that truth is still good in 2020. Uh, that truth that was still good in the 60s, uh, in the 70s, and the 80s, uh, it's still good in, the, in 2020. Uh, this morning, I want you to seek the Lord and repent for every falsehood. Every thought, every action, every omission, Every time we tried to shade things. Lying on your taxes. I heard one preacher say, say, can you be trusted even with the paper clips in your office? Can you be trusted with your office supplies? Can you be trusted with, with just the little things? The Bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. It's up to us. Ah, to, to come to God. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him up from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Ah, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Accept the truth of, of the gospel this morning. The truth of the gospel is is that we're all sinners in need of a savior. Accept the truth of the gospel this morning. Accept that God is able to heal you. Stop, saying, stop speaking those lies to yourself. I've done too much. I've gone too far astray. God will not accept me. God will not forgive me. I've hurt too many people. The damage has already been done. There's nothing I can do. But guess what? God loves you. He's in love with the backslider, the Bible lets us know. He loves you unconditionally. He loves you unconditionally. He says, come unto me, all of you that are weak and heavy laden, all of you that are carrying around your burdens, all of you that are carrying around lies and deceptions. He says, come unto me, all of you that are weak and heavy laden, all of you that are burdened down with the cares of life. You don't have to wallow in lies and deceit, the lies that you've been told. Uh, that, don't, don't you know that, that? That's what the devil tries to do. The devil tries to fill your head with the lies that you, are, that you do not belong to God, that Jesus is not real. He tries to fill your head with lies that the word is not true, that it applies to those other people, but not you. But the, I, my Bible lets me know that his word will not return void. Every promise in him is yea, and a man, I ask you this morning to accept the truth of the gospel. God is love. He loves you, and he wants you 
to develop a relationship with him. Hebrews 3 and 15 says, the day, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Come, give your heart to God. Surrender to God. Whatever it is that you have done that has, has been not on the up and up. You don't have to go back and try to rehash history. Yeah, you should, if you should go and if, if you need to go and apologize. Some people need, you know, I, I can feel some people need to apologize this week. But there's going to be some people going out. I, you know, I got to tell you uh, that such and such, uh, uh, to tell the truth. Uh, there, there's some people that got to go out this week and fix some stuff. If there's, a, if there's some carnage in your life, you look behind you and you see some damage back there of some fires that you have started, go put them out. Pray unto the Lord before you go. Be led by the Holy Spirit before you do so. God wants to deliver you from every affliction. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. He shed his precious blood for us. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon us with his stripes. We're healed. Part of the healing process is being truthful about where you are. Being truthful. Are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. But are you living like one? Are you living like one? Are you serving like one? Uh, to tell the truth. There's an old song that was sang years ago. It said, called the Battle Hymn of the Republic. It says, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling on the, on the, on the vintage where the grapes of wrath have stored. He has loosened the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword, but his truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. His truth will never stop. His truth is the standard that we must live by. His truth is marching on. Jesus is set to, turn, to return. Get your life in order. Don't stand before the Lord in, on judgment day after you've been living a lie. Give your life to the Lord now. Surrender to God now, right there where you are. You don't have to, nobody has to lay hands on you. He says, all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Accept the Lord as your Savior. He'll fill you full of the Holy Spirit. He'll fill you with the baptism of the Holy Spirit right there where you are. Come and pray with me. Lord, we thank you. And we pray, Lord God, that you touch hearts and minds today. That, Lord God, those that have been not upright with you. How can we be upright, uh, not upright with you, Lord God, when you know all and you see all and you're everywhere present at the same time? How foolish is it, Lord God, that we come to you, Lord God, believing, Lord God, that we got it all together when we know that we are less than. But Lord God, we thank you and we praise your God for being a forgiving God, for being a merciful God, a gracious God. We thank you, God, for being truth. We know, Lord God, that when we come to you, Lord God, that, Lord God, you're able to build us up. You're able to strengthen us. You're able, Lord God, to put us, our lives back together again. You are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us and make us. Help us, O oh God, to exemplify the truth that you are. You said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Live in truth, because I am truth. Lord, we thank you, and we praise you for the standard that you have set. We ask, oh God, that you help us to live up to that standard in every area, whether it be little or small. No more, no more little white lies. No more, there, there are no white lies. But in the name of Jesus, there's just lies. We ask, oh God, that you help us, oh God, to be an example in the earth of the goodness of the Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord, help us to be pleasing to you. All right, that's our heart. That's our, all of our heart's desire, Lord, to, just to be pleasing to God, to be found pleasing to God, to, for God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. All right, I praise God for all of you joining us here uh, this morning. Uh, went a little bit longer than what we usually do, but I uh, praise God for you all hanging in here with me. Uh, and 
I pray that you continue to join us here in this format as long as we have, and we'll continue to do so as long as we can. If you are moved to give uh, into this ministry, you can feel free to give through uh, the Bible Way Church app. Uh, that is the Bible Way Church app. You can find that on Google Play. You can find that uh, on uh, you can find that on uh, the App Store as well. And you can give there as well, or you can give through the Bible Way Church website, www.biblewaychurchcolumbus.com, or you can just simply mail your gift to the church if you are so inclined to do so. Four fifty three South Wheatland Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43204. God bless you. I hope you all have already started voting. If you have not, uh, make sure that you go out and vote uh, and uh, make sure that you go out and and uh, and let your voice be heard. Speak truth to power, all right? Uh, make sure you go, go out and let your voice be heard uh, and uh, do your homework all the way up and down the ticket. Don't just vote for the top of the ticket. Uh, because those people down at the bottom of the ticket are, affect your life more than the ones at the top. I tell you that. Uh, so make sure that you go and do your homework uh, so that you can, uh, you can let your voice be heard uh, as well. All right. Uh, and we're going to go. And we, we had a beautiful event yesterday. Uh, we fed a thousand people right here on the parking lot. Uh, so many people was, was fed uh, by boxes of food, uh, and so many saints of God came to help us do so. And so I encourage you to come out. Next, we're going to do it again next week. We're going to do it again next week from 11 to 2. So please come on out uh, and join us uh, from 11 to 2. We're going we're gonna to do it again, and we're going to pass out hot meals as well. Uh, so come out and help us be a blessing to this community. Be a light on the hill. We are the light on the hill. All right, come on out and help us shine that light brightly and minister to people uh, as they come, all right? Okay, all right, we're gonna go ahead and, and dismiss. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, God, for all that you have done yet to do in us and through us. We praise you, Lord God, for all that you, you've done. Thank you for this word. Lord God, this word, oh God, speaks truth to our hearts. This word, oh God, gives us, oh God, a standard, oh God, in which we are to measure ourselves, oh God. We ask, oh Lord, Lord God, you let this word resonate in our hearts and become a part of us, oh God, that when life comes at us, oh God, we are full, full of the word of God. And Lord God, we, when we rest and stand on this truth that is found in the word of God. And walk by faith and not by sight. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take part uh, in, uh, in, in our, 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 our outing this, uh, this upcoming Saturday. Uh, thank you to growth. Thank you to those that are uh, glory to God ministries. Thank you for all those that have participated and helped over these last two weeks. We're going to continue to do so, and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and we're going to bless people again next week. So uh, thank you all so much for all that you have done and how you have contributed. All right? God bless you. See you again next week. Oh, see you on Wednesday. Wednesday, Bible study. Meet me on Wednesday at, for Bible study right here on Facebook Live and also on Zoom. Brother Mike. Hey. How you doing, Brother Mike? I'm here. Thank you. That's a message, right. a message that could have been preached at Nat National Mall this morning. Oh. In DC. It was very powerful. Yes, we have, uh, thanks again to Growth, girls reaching out with their hearts for the boxes of uh, USDA-approved food. Uh, this is a great ministry. So those are, Growth is Hunger's uh, first responders. So we really appreciate the work uh, they're doing. And also in the community, uh, there's after-school meals at uh, several sites, which yes. you can find at childrenshungeralliance.org. Uh, That's children's without the apostrophe, hungeralliance.org. Happy anniversary to Elder Buckner and Baleen Buckner, uh, October 21st. Major anniversary of 40 ah. plus years there. 40 and, plus years. Yeah, I can't remember the exact number. How many years, Otis? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new <laughs> day. It's long. That's a long, nice long time. And then another number I don't have is Jordan uh, Johnson had a birthday right in the middle of the week. And I can't remember how old he is, but I think he's close to being a, a senior in high school. I know that. I think he's 17 or 18. He's up there. 
I'll get that uh, from Antoinette. But I know he had a birthday this week, so happy, happy birthday, Jordan. And uh, this coming uh, Wednesday, 7 o'clock, Bible study. And we're still in our book uh, from Miles Monroe. So uh, we're just uh, blessed to have the, those messages in our Bible study every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So we appreciate you. And it's been 29 weeks now doing this uh, online. So looking forward to that day we get together in fellowship. Again, make sure you get out there and, and, and vote. Take, take advantage of the veggie van. Veggie van will be out today. And uh, make sure that you uh, come out and, and uh, partake of the fresh fruits and, and vegetables here uh, that are uh, available to you. And uh, so we want to be a blessing to this community in multiple different ways. So come and, and be a part of us. Come and join us. All right. All right. Thank you, Brother Mike. Appreciate you. Uh, go and get those, uh, those lunches for those Columbus City School students that are out there. Go and get those lunches. Uh, they are available, I believe, in lots of different sites all around the city. You can find it on our, the emails that we've been sending out. You can find it on the Columbus City Schools website. You can pick up the box of lunches and breakfast meals uh, for an entire week. You can go pick those up uh, for your youngsters. Uh, so that way they do not have to go hungry during the school day. They can actually focus uh, during the school day uh, on uh, the things that, uh, that they need to focus on. All right. All right. We're going to go ahead and dismiss God. We thank you. We praise your God for all that you have done, all that you have yet to do in us and through us. We ask, oh God, that the power of God rest upon us, oh God. Help us, oh God, to uh, be examples in the earth of, the, of your goodness. Thank you. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Until next week, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>